Look at this delightful arctic fox. <laughs> Adorable. Do you know that they have very frigid peats on the end of their dutes? Yes, their peats can get as chilly as zero degrees Celsius. Now you may think that this harms the arctic fox, but it actually saves them energy. Inside of their dutes, they have a counter current heat exchange going on with their arteries and veins. That means they're very, very close together in their dutes, and as blood flows down from their warmer core towards the colder snow, it loses temperature, but then it passes back in on itself. It passes the blood going out on its way back in, so it heats up before it gets back to the core. This results in a very, very chilly peat, but the core of the animal stays warmer for longer, and because the peats are so cold, zero degrees Celsius, they don't have enough heat to melt the snow underfoot or under peat, so the, uh, their little toe beans stay nice and uh, uh, dry. Peats, dutes, beans, scientific terms, look it up. Welcome to another edition of Footnotes, the companion show to Because Science, where I take all of your comments, questions, and corrections and address them with all of my loved ones beside me. It's what I care about most. And then I tell you what's coming up next on this channel. Hint! It's not a great hint. I know. But getting right to it, on the last episode of Because Science, we were trying to tackle a very bizarre but very fun thought experiment presented to us by the new film Mortal Engines. In this episode, we were trying to figure out, at least mass-wise, how you would transport an entire city's worth of stuff on wheels. We said that you'd only need a couple hundred of the largest self-powered vehicles ever created by man, the NASA crawler transporters. <laughs> That's not that much. So, uh... What did you have to say? Our first comment comes from Chris Cochran, who says, Hey Kyle, the NASA engineers have said that they can make the crawler transporter move faster, but when moving hundreds of millions of dollars, you need to be as careful as possible. Well, okay, that's very interesting, Chris. It makes sense that if you are transporting a multi-million dollar space shuttle, you don't want to go too fast, otherwise it could result in the loss of the shuttle, and that would be very bad. A similar constraint would apply to putting a city on wheels because you have people and infrastructure and people getting surgery and stuff, and you wouldn't want to go too fast and then hit the brakes and... And when the NASA engineers do move the crawler transporter from where it starts all the way to the launch pad, it can take as much as six hours to get there. That is not very fast if you're trying to escape a city piloted by Mr. Smith. Our next comment comes from super nerd Tombi Apocalypse, who says 19,000 liters for gasoline times 610 NASA crawlers. That's like $32 million worth of gasoline. <laughs> I'm not paying that. Well, I, I only got $8 million, but let's try something else anyway. If we're doing, as we calculated, less than an inch per gallon in fuel economy for our city, moving on all of those NASA crawler transporters, you're paying $200,000 per mile. That's like buying a Lamborghini per mile, and they only get nine miles per gallon. I think there's some other conversions that we can do there. But anyway, I like them nums. <laughs> Our next comment comes from myself, who says, okay, but for an entire city to be moving at like 90 miles per hour over totally messed up war-torn ground, wouldn't riding it just feel like a continuous earthquake shaking buildings apart and throwing people off their feet or off the side until it's just one big pile of rubble? What kind of material could hold these cities together? Well. As for what material the city would have to be made out of, given all of this rumbling and crumbling, I don't know. This would be a gargantuan engineering experiment, which would require a lot of intelligence and a lot of planning just to make work. I'm not even sure there are materials that could make this happen. The NASA crawler transporters have a laser guidance system on them to keep track of all that mass and where it's going. They have giant jacks, they have an equalization system, they have leveling cylinders. So yes, it would be much harder than just putting wheels underneath this thing. It would be a giant undertaking of engineering. Our next comment comes from Lee Fontaine, who says, while moving, London would be experiencing constant hurricane force winds at 90 miles per hour. It'd be crazy to travel from building to building even while this city is in motion. 
Yeah, I guess I didn't think about that. Going 90 miles per hour, putting your head out the window in any building. Oh, hello, neighbor. That's how they sound in London. Oh, hello, neighbor. That's how they sound in London. It would feel like you're putting your head outside of the window uh, of a car traveling down the highway, which would be incredibly annoying. You don't want to live in that city. It would be the real Windy City. And that's not even why they call Chicago the Windy City. They called Chicago the Windy City because it was very boastful about being the best city to host the World's Fair uh, like 100 years ago. And so they're full of wind. Ooh, they're a windy city because they're boasting so much about their greatness. What were we talking about? But the nerdiest comment at the time I'm filming this episode, I'm giving to one time and now two times super nerd Warland writer who calculates just how quickly the city in the episode would be going if it passed by my face in that video as quickly as it did. And they calculated if I was scaled to the size of the city that it would pass uh, 2,500 meters in .375 seconds, which means it would have to be going not 90 miles per hour, like I said, but in the episode as I showed it, Mach 19. Mach 1 is around 700 miles per hour. So multiply that by 20. Mm -hmm. That's fast. You did it again, Warland Rider. You went the extra mile. <laughs> or kilometer, should I say. And for that, you are indeed a super nerd. Oh! Right here. Now, of course, I'm not always right. I couldn't remember the term private eye the other day, so I said detective with eyes. Jack Noir, detective with eyes. What? Don't you need those to be a detective? Yes. The biggest correction this week comes from a lot of you who all say, well, instead of just using all of that fuel like we calculated for the NASA crawler transporters, all 600 of them, why not just put a nuclear reactor in there? One or two or three nuclear reactors could handle the entire power requirement for our moving city. Sure. Why not? I only used diesel and gasoline engines because that's what NASA crawler transporters have. But if you used a more efficient source of energy that you wouldn't have to be refueling all the time, the facility itself would be very heavy. But you wouldn't have to provide a lot of fuel and stop for refueling for nuclear uh, reactors, then yes, that would be probably a better option. And I want to take this moment to point out something that kind of it's controversial, but it gets on my nerves sometimes. So a lot of people think that nuclear energy is just straight up bad because of the potential danger of like uh, a nuclear meltdown, that it can't be the future of energy or can't go forward into you know, a greener future of energy. I just want to point you in the direction of this graph. This graph shows how many deaths per year can be attributed to the different sources of energy. And as you can see, coal is by far the front runner. And that is because all of the air pollution attributable deaths that happen each year. Nuclear power is less than one death per year, and that's accidents at plants. Even given the potential for a meltdown, they provide so much power so safely and carbon neutrally that I think they still should be considered a lot more positively than they are in the social consciousness. Or maybe that's just where I live. Our next correction goes one step further, and it comes from Shreyansh Anshila, that was my first attempt, who says, why don't you use solar power instead? And he goes on to calculate a couple of things and says, uh, a single of the world's largest batteries uh, produced by Tesla could power the entire city. There would even be enough power in the city to sustain the city forever, assuming repairs and damages are none. <laughs> oh, emoji. Again, like nuclear power, if we have a different power setup, assuming that there is enough surface area on tops of the roofs of all the cities, then this would probably be a better option than constantly refueling and having a large battery and stuff like that. This all reminds me, the, the Tesla and the battery stuff reminds me, reminds me of a show, but I can't. Ah, oh well. But the nerdiest correction at the time I'm filming this episode, I'm giving to Thaurangar. Ruler of the seven Baskin Robbinses, who says the NASA crawler transporter cannot reverse. It has two driver seats facing in the opposite directions. So the running gag in the entire episode was a lot of backing up sounds. And the NASA crawler transporter technically never backs up. And so a lot of what I did was wrong for the sake of joke. Good job. You got me.
but for getting me. You are indeed a super nerd, Threngar, or whatever. Now, if you are already subscribed to Alpha, which you can do at projectalpha.com, you already know what the next episode of Because Science is going to be because you have already seen it, along with other premium content from Nerdist, Geek and Sundry, and myself. But if you haven't subscribed to Alpha just yet, the next episode of Because Science is, can you survive pop culture grappling hooks? That's right, in this week's episode of Because Science, we are evaluating the very common trope of pop culture grappling hooks that can hook into a surface and pull you along at crazy speeds, like you'd find in Batman or The Legend of Zelda. This episode, however, is focusing on the Just Cause video game franchise because that dude zips around every place and we are gonna evaluate all of that for its potential deadliness. So go watch the latest episode of Because Science if you haven't yet at youtube.com slash because science, facebook.com slash because science, and at the, my name on Instagram and Twitter. That's where you can leave me comments, corrections, questions, and ideas for future episodes. Sometimes I use them. In fact, a couple of the next upcoming episodes are right from you. So leave me all of your nerdiest stuff. And don't forget, if you always try, look, so if you wanted to make sure that, the thing that people always forget about is, is that if you really, take a car, and if you, and if you, if you got in that car and you put your foot down on the, take a battery, and inside of that battery, people are always wondering, what, if you, if you, if you look into politics really and you just open a newspaper, what do you see? That's exactly what I'm talking about, because 